an explanation and an apology, but no immediate solution. Egypt's army chief turned president faces the nation over massive power cuts, seeking support and begging for patience. Hello and welcome to this edition of Inside Egypt. I'm Hazem Sika. Egypt's president, Abdel Fattah el-Sisi, has given a nationally televised speech as public anger grows over power shortages. A huge power cut ground much of the country to a halt on Thursday. And the worst incident yet after months of rolling blackouts have plunged entire neighborhoods into darkness for hours on end. And that's brought protesters out onto the streets in towns and cities across Egypt. There have been calls for the resignation of the electricity minister. And a Facebook campaign has urged people not to pay their electricity bills. Well, President Sisi blamed the crisis on years of neglect, describing it as the most significant incident for three decades. He said Egypt needed about $12 billion over five years to upgrade and build new power plants. And he added that the government was seeking investors to provide the funds. Well, Sisi's predecessor, President Mohamed Morsi, faced growing public anger over his inability to deal with the power crisis. And Sisi ousted Morsi last year, and he has been quick now to make sure this issue is a shared problem. Egypt is facing a huge problem. This problem requires dovetailing all efforts, efforts of all the Egyptians to stand united, join forces, hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, in order to brave through. Now, before we begin our discussion, I'd like to first get some reaction from Cairo. Al Jazeera is banned from reporting in Egypt, but joining us on the phone is Hassan Nafa, a professor of political science at Cairo University. Good to speak with you, uh, Professor Nafa. I, I want to ask you, first of all, uh, about the extent of the problem there, how widespread it is, and, and how damaging these power cuts have been. What happened last uh, Thursday was very serious. Uh, most of the people were negatively affected. Uh, some hospital uh, has not been able to uh, do their uh, work uh, properly. Uh, and even some of the lines of, of the metro lines uh, uh, stopped completely uh, and so on. So that was very uh, serious. Uh, it, it never happened uh, with the, this gravity for a long time. That's why I think uh, General Sisi felt that he has to address himself uh, yeah, directly to the people and to explain to them what happened. Do you think he did that? I mean, w what did you make of uh, President Sisi's speech and what's been the reaction uh, among ordinary Egyptians to, to what he said? You know, he, he tried to, to, send, to send a twofold uh, message. Uh, one, uh, that uh, the burden is... Uh, he has inherited is very heavy and without the cooperation and the support of the Egyptian people he will not be able to do uh, anything. Uh, second, he is very serious to, uh, and he is even optimistic and determined to do whatever is necessary uh, to rebuild uh, uh, Egypt back uh, again. But uh, uh, there has been no technical explanation what why this happened uh, and if this will be repeated again. There is a technical report that has to be uh, prepared. It is not yet published, and I think I promised to, to reveal uh, exactly. So he, he is trying to convince the people that he will work uh, through transparency and he will not uh, lie to the people. But uh, I think uh, uh, yeah, the confidence of the people has been a little bit... Uh, Eroding uh, if he uh, continues to uh, to work uh, through uh, transparency, he might be able to restore uh, the shake confidence. Yeah, I, I, just picking up on the issue of, of public confidence, we know uh, CC is still very popular with millions uh, of Egyptians. Are you seeing uh, a mood change uh, there at all? And uh, uh, have you seen any any protests of any kind there? No, I think uh, most of the people still think that he is the right man to uh, to lead Egypt for the, the moment. Uh, and uh, uh, the burden is really too heavy. Uh, he has to be supported. But I, 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 I think uh, some of the Egyptians started to, uh, to have some uh, some doubts whether he has the right uh, the right policy. Uh, uh, the, the, the poor people uh, do not uh, feel 
that uh, their situation is about to uh, be ameliorated uh, soon. Uh, still, uh, the rich people continue to benefit from his uh, policy. So, uh, I think uh, I think uh, he has to, to change a little bit uh, his policy uh, right now to uh, to support a little bit uh, the deprived people and the poor people. Good to speak with you, Hassan Nafar, joining us uh, on the line there from Cairo. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, let's bring in our other guests now for this edition of Inside Egypt. In our London Broadcast Centre, we have Omar Ashour, a senior lecturer in Middle East politics and security issues for the Institute of Arab and Islamic Studies at Exeter University. And joining us from our studios in Washington, D.C., is Mohammed Inmanshawi, an Egyptian journalist and analyst at the Middle East Institute. Good to have you both uh, with us, gentlemen. So I want to ask your reaction then uh, to uh, that speech from, from the Egyptian president. First of all, to you, Omar Ashour, did he um, address the concerns of Egyptians? Well, I, uh, he uh, to try to uh, address the concerns. He uh, made uh, this mix of, uh, I inherited this problem, so you cannot blame me, forgetting to mention that the most of the, with the exception of Mohammed Morsi, the, the ones who led us to this problem were uh, other military generals who were uh, presiding over Egypt. Uh, the second one was the psychological dimension of hypernationalism. Egypt is great, and Egypt is going to, uh, you know, overcome this problem, and we have to stand up to the challenge as a unit, uh, which is a unit I am presiding. Um, uh, so basically, uh, uh, go behind me, and uh, in that sense, he gave a couple of hits to the media, uh, basically saying that the the reporting is not as accurate, and he he said like he's supportive of free media and everything, but what they are doing is. Uh, quite negative. Um, and then uh, the, the third dimension was blaming it on the spoilers or what he called the uh, uh, people of evil, um, you know, Ahl al-Sharr, you know. And the people of evil are supposedly probably the uh, political opposition who he ousted in uh, 2013. Um, and therefore, he's hinting that uh, they are uh, behind this problem. So it was a mix of psychological hypernationalist blaming it on the other, uh, but he comes out clean. And this is all coming in a, in a, in a setting where the nature of the regime um, or the nature of what happened after 2013 is, uh, is non-transparent. You don't have a transparency setting. Uh, you don't have an accountability setting. There is no elected parliament so far. Um, uh, and pr pretty much the political opposition has been uh, pushed aside. Uh, and then a, a, a very strong uh, repression campaign that uh, more or less marginalized any uh, voices of dissent. Um, so, you know, quite a complex uh, context we have there. Mohammed al Manshawi, what did you make of uh, President Sisi's speech? Uh, in addition to what Omar uh, just said, I believe uh, there is a positive uh, uh, point here. He comes to speak to Egyptian people and try to, to throw the blame on everybody, not only in the government or his cabinet. And uh, I believe it's a smart move from his side because uh, to speak to the people and tell them you have a share in this problem and you have a role to play to fix this problem using hyper-nationalist uh, slogans is very positive and uh, maybe serve him in short term. However, he didn't provide any long-term solution saying we need uh, $13 billion. That's uh, old news. We know that uh, uh, over the years, but no regime was able to provide this money to fix this problem. I believe it's very structural. Uh, crisis Egypt is facing because it's not only power shortage; it's, it it threats the, the industry, industries, and uh, and the service and uh, the daily li life of people. And I believe uh, uh, he was honest to say it won't be fixed tomorrow or after tomorrow. But uh, he successfully blamed uh, everybody, not the government, for what happened. All right. Yeah, I want to pick up on this point about the manner in which uh, President Sisi address, addressed the Egyptian uh, people and recognizing. Uh, the, the, the problems uh, that they were facing. So we're going to hear a short clip um, uh, of that now. Many advised me not to address you verbally today, and they asked me to release written statement, yet I preferred to speak off the cuff countrymen to his fellow countrymen based on my responsibility by virtue of my office and based on the responsibility you placed on my shoulder. It is not only my shoulder, it is your shoulders too. 
Please, be patient. Rest assured, we will surmount all these obstacles. Yet, not overnight, not in a couple of months. We are racing against times in all directions. Yeah, a number of things to pick up on there, Omar uh, Ashour. And uh, I want to ask you about the fact that he, uh, you know, he mentioned this in, in that clip we just played, the, the fact that he addressed the Egyptian people in the, the colloquial uh, Egyptian Arabic rather than the, the, the more formal, stilted uh, official Arabic that we often hear from Arab leaders when, when they make speeches. W what did you make of that? I think it's an, uh, in a, it's an attempt to uh, try to approach the, the, the people uh, in a different way and try to tell them that this is a, a shared problem. Here I am, one of you, uh, speaking your own colloquial language and uh, telling you that I cannot do much. You know, this is a, a structural uh, problem and it has been complicated and I inherited it uh, from uh, previous governments and regimes. Uh, so it's a, it's also it, it fits into that psychological approach of, of the mix of uh, you know hypernationalism on one side, uh, but also the the side that we're all in this together and I'm just uh, one of you. Uh, the problem with that is that uh, no no politician can speak in that manner, um, uh, the, the manner of uh, you know so nobody could uh, tell me uh, anything uh, after a year. Uh, or no accountability after a year because I promised you from the beginning that this is going to be very hard. Uh, in the beginning, he was saying a year ago that I am, uh, you know, fire and torture, you know, so it's, it's not going to be a, uh, a very easy ride. Uh, so, but, but in, in, a, in a context where you have accountability, uh, political competition, no politician can afford to tell people I am fire and torture. And no, no politician can afford to uh, pretty much come out and say it's all, it's the blame of the others. It's, it's either inherited problems or there are spoilers, or we're going to be great and uh, nobody is going to, you know, in a year after that, you know, if there is n no achievements, no one can come to CC and tell him, you know, there are no achievements, so please change the leadership. Because then, you know, the, the, the guns and the heavy stick will come out and uh, will break the skulls of whoever uh, make that challenge. So uh, the, the nature of the regime is very much in the background of, of this speech. Uh, Mohammed he, he he made quite a point of uh, uh, you know asking for people's uh, patience. Uh, he mentioned that several times, and in listening to this speech as well, uh, I think I counted at least uh, half a dozen times when he said uh, we have many problems or we have a big problem. Words to that effect. W what did you make of that? Uh, uh, I believe he first and his regime eliminate any opposition in Egypt. That's what happened during the last 15, 16 months. And they have draconian uh, protest law, so Egyptians can't go to the street anymore to, to present their voices uh, if they are not happy with the regime or its policies or the short of, of, of power. Uh, so the people are deterred, first of all, of taking any serious actions. Uh, such uh, actions uh, took uh, place during Morsi and uh, during the SCAF period. So the people are deterred to go on expressing, expressing their views. And uh, he made it clear there's no alternative. And he called for unity of Egyptian people. This language of Nasser and 60s, it can't apply to today's politics, but he is trying to impose it in Egyptians and Egyptian media and Egyptian uh, business community, uh, uh, politicians as well. Uh, and I believe he was talking mainly to the people who have great expectations in him. He, he is still supportive, uh, supported by millions of Egyptians who voted for him. And they have great expectations. But he is coming today in their face, tells them, reduce your expectations. No uh, fixation for any problem, a power, uh, health care system, uh, traffic, uh, uh, running water. It's, it's all a uh, structural crisis in Egypt. And uh, he has no solution, nor his re regime. However, I, I found out that a lot of voices in the last two days calling for the military to take over the uh, Ministry of Electricity, uh, blaming civilians for the failure of this crisis we witnessed last week. And I believe there is tendency to, to give everything to the military to run and to fix. Uh, and the media, which he uh, touched upon several times today, he's trying to, uh, to intimidate in order to uh, speak in favor, uh, favorable language towards the current regime. Oh, but this gets to the question, Mohammed, of, of what would what would people have uh, preferred him to say that, that he didn't? I mean, you, you're a journalist. As journalists, we, we often call out politicians for making promises that they can't keep. Uh, here is a president who, who is saying who is saying I'm not making any promises here. These are huge problems uh, and I'm asking for people to be patient. Doesn't that make sense politically? 
it does uh, make sense as long as there is no competition and alternative. Uh, he is just in office for, what, three months? And he supposedly to have uh, over four years in office. So he, he doesn't want to corner himself. Uh, Morsi did mistake when he said in hundred first hundred days I will fix uh, some issues and he failed and I, we were all blaming him for that. I believe uh, Sisi is uh, kind of smarter here, not giving any promise, being realistic. He said I won't fix anything, not today, not in months and don't expect much. And uh, he has the courage and the capital and the uh, security apparatus, the police apparatus that supports his call today. Uh, Omar Ashour, he said as well, this is going to be a very expensive problem to fix. We mentioned that the $12 billion uh, that he said it's, it's going to take uh, long term to, to address this problem. And he's calling for, for investors. Where, where is that money going to come from? I think uh, the, the, it will be quite difficult at the moment. You have two routes, uh, the route of the FDIs, the foreign direct investments, uh, but the, the, the situation in the country is not stable yet, and it's, uh, everybody knows it's quite uh, polarizing at the moment, and that affects, of course, the prospects for investments. Uh, on the other hand, you have the, the, it's a very political economy as well, so you have the regional patrons who more or less support this line, uh, the, the, the line of uh, the, the military ruler uh, in Egypt, uh, and those can already uh, made some uh, heavy investments in the country in, in terms of grants and loans. Uh, but again, I, I'm not sure if they're willing to give more because there is a limit as well on, on their, uh, um, the, the, their contributions uh, to, to the country. Uh, the one thing that he did not touch uh, in the speech is uh, an attempt to depolarize the situation or, or de-escalate uh, via more or less a political reconciliation that uh, reflects or has some positive reflections on the uh, economic context and therefore bring back the tourists and bring back the foreign direct investments. So that issue seemed to be uh, ruled out uh, at the moment. I'm going to play another uh, clip now from uh, President Sisi's speech he, in which he addresses some of the, the issues that we've just talked about uh, uh, in terms of the, the potential for uh, instability uh, and what sort of reaction there may be uh, to all of this. So we're going to hear that now. Many others are trying to cripple our efforts. The public facility is not immune. It is vulnerable. And above all, many wish to cripple the efforts aimed at improving our day of life, way of life. Why? Simply to agitate, to cause the Egyptian people to rise in anger. As I said, we are facing many problems. It is a battle for existence. Omar Ashur, who do you think he was talking to there? And what does he mean when he said this is a battle for existence? I think there are two things here. I think he was referring mainly to uh, the political opposition, so the, the very wide mix of them from the, uh, uh, the Muslim Brothers and the Freedom and Justice Party to the pro-Morsi uh, uh, coalition uh, who wants to uh, install back uh, Morsi to the uh, very wide coalition of what you can call them the anti-coup uh, uh, co coalition, which has uh, folks that do not want to see the military uh, ruling again, like the Socialist Revolutionaries, April 6 and others. Uh, and then you have the, the as well the uh, the armed groups like uh, the the Ansar Bayt al-Maqdis, for example, in uh, in Sinai. So you have uh, more or less uh, everybody uh, f uh, in the uh, on the opposition side who opposes what happened, or or, or either opposed what happened on July 3rd, or opposed the uh, uh, the uh, going back on the track of the uh, uh, of the roadmap that he promised back in in, in July 2013. Um, and, and this uh, very wide mix uh, seems to be either repressed, uh, having many of its figures uh, in jail or, or, or marginalized. And what he's trying to do is to uh, more or less uh, uh, bolster his public support and, and tell the people that those are the spoilers. Uh, so it's a classic spoiler tactics to uh, uh, make things harder for the people so the public uh, can uh, turn against him. Uh, but this is exactly the tactic that was used in uh, between uh, uh, 2012, June 2012 and June 2013 under Morsi, uh, except that you had a, a political environment that was uh, uh, much less repressive and uh, mo much more inclusive uh, compared to what, uh, what you have now. Uh, the, the, um, the other dimension um, 
Um, uh, is uh, you mentioned the bling game and you asked me another question, but I forgot it now. Yeah, I, was, I just wanted to ask you when he said uh, uh, this is a battle for existence. W what do you think he meant by that? Yeah, the battle for existence. I think it's uh, it's for the, his regime existence, I believe, uh, or or for his existence. Because if if that regime shaked, um, I think uh, after all these deaths and uh, all these injuries and um, uh, you know the. Uh, uh, political detainees, I think there, there will be accountability, and in, in that case, it's an existence for him. But what he's uh, trying to say is to play again the hyper nationalist card and, and saying that this is a battle of existence for Egypt, not, not for his regime or not for his personal uh, survival. So um, I think that mix is, um, uh, will help him quite a bit because it will bl blur any. Um, uh, boundaries between uh, him as, as, a, as a political leader, uh, his regime, uh, and the state of Egypt. Mohammed El uh Egyptians are unfortunately no strangers to, to these kind of power cuts. Uh, as we mentioned there, it happened under uh, Morsi, it happened uh, under Mubarak, and it's something that's been going on uh, for, for years. It is, it is a, a systemic problem which President Sisi uh, has, has alluded to. So the, it, it gets to the question of, of are Egyptians how long are Egyptians prepared to be uh, patient about all of this? It's uh, very difficult to tell, but uh, poor Egyptians uh, that f live in two doors a day, they used to this hardship. Uh, they have very poor uh, public service, poor education, poor health care, poor roads, uh, poor infrastructure. So there is no news for that. What uh, we may look at is uh, uh, elite Egyptians and the business community, because what the government and Sisi's regime is proposing is, is hurting them in short term. Uh, uh, increasing the price for energy for uh, factories, uh, cement, uh, uh, steel, and, and uh, others will hurt the rich Egyptians. Uh, increasing uh, price for, uh, uh, for diesel and, and uh, natural gas will hurt these people who are using that for export. So I believe there is some a strong interest group will be hurt by the CC regime policies or announced policies toward uh, fixing this crisis. And uh, it's wait to see, because they, uh, this group uh, supported the coup and supported CC, assuming uh, he won't come close to, to their privilege. But uh, as uh, things deteriorating in Egypt economically, uh, they will be touched soon by, by these policies. And uh, we'll wait and see. But uh, he prepared the political scene, political theater in Egypt for no serious opposition. They have this draconian uh, protest law. so. A lot of people will be deterred from going back to streets, as we witnessed uh, in the last three years. And a lot of people are jailed already, thousands of them. So it's a very, very difficult uh, task for Egyptians who don't uh, like the policies to go back to the street. So it's it's a formula for, for disaster. I don't know when, but, but uh, it's not uh, going to sustain these policies. Uh, I'm not sure. Final thought to you then. Do you view this as a, as a wait and see uh, approach? How, how do you see all of this playing out? No, it's more than a wait and see. It's uh, well, uh, the, the, there is the the dimensions we mentioned. You know, the psychological part, the, the hyper nationalist uh, part, and then the promise of uh, it, it's going to get better part. Uh, but all of this cannot uh, cannot fly uh, except with a, a very uh, repressive apparatus. If the, except if you have a stick, uh, because then uh, you, you minimize the, the the environment, the competitive environment. Uh, make sure that dissent is not uh, too loud to create uh, public or to support public. Uh, anger or outcry, and uh, make sure that there are no alternatives, that I, I am the only alternative and therefore keep the people uh, around you. So this kind of rhetoric uh, would only, or this kind of speech would only make some uh, uh, resonance and, and some impact uh, in a very uh, repressive environment. If you don't have the repressive environment, it will be ridiculed uh, all over. And on that, we are going to have to leave it. Good to speak with both of you, Omar Ashour in London and Mohammed in Menshawi in Washington, D.C. And our thanks, of course, to Hassan Nafa, who joined us earlier on the phone from Cairo. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Al Jazeera is banned from reporting in Egypt, and three Al Jazeera journalists have been detained there since December the 31st. The channel is demanding the immediate release of Baher Mohammed, Mohammed Fahmi, and Peter Grester. They received long sentences after a trial seen by many observers as politically motivated. Their convictions are being appealed. Their case has been raised by the UN Secretary General in a conversation with the Egyptian president. And remember, Al Jazeera has extensive and continuing coverage on air and online of what's happening in Egypt. I'm Hazem Sika. Thanks for watching. Goodbye for now.